Welcome to Attention Talk Video, where we pay attention to attention. Now, here's your host, Jeff Copper. Welcome, everybody, to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host, cognitive engineer and ADHD coach, Jeff Copper. Uh, a couple months ago, I had a viewer ask uh, me to do a video on the impact of hormones uh, with people with ADHD. And it was it's quite an interesting topic um, because it it there's something to this um hormones really have a lot of effect on us um and it was kind of interesting i was coaching a guy about eight or nine years ago probably the smartest individual i've ever met he had like 175 iq and at the time he said you know when you think about it the physical makeup of your brain and the chemical makeup of your brain controls more of your thinking and your thoughts than you actually realize. And it struck me. He said, yeah, think of people that are like schizophrenia. Like, why is it that they do what they do? Well, because there's difference that they think differently based off of the condition. And it's always been interesting to me um, because I think it has an impact. I'll, I, 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 I never forget, um, you know, I'm a parent just like everybody else. And when my older son was about 14, I found myself like screaming at him one time. And I caught myself, I'm like, here's a 14 year old kid going through puberty. Like his brain has released all these hormones and his body's changing. He's, there's all kinds of stuff that's going on. I'm like, he's like intoxicated with hormones. Like, what am I, I'm screaming at a drunk. I mean, screaming at a drunk, like, and I stopped instantaneously. It was a moment of self-awareness. And the reason I'm saying that is because hormones have a real impact on our behavior and how we think. And so I think it was a really interesting kind of question. And before we get a lot into it, because I'm going to talk about it a little bit, I'm not going to go way into detail, like a lot of detail, because at the end of the day, so hormones do have an impact on you if you have ADHD. Well, okay, they do, but at the end of the day, you still have to manage it. It's your responsibility. Um, it doesn't make it any easier, but sometimes understanding the why can help remove some of the emotional um uh, negativity that you put around yourself and realize it's a condition and you're doing the best at what you're doing. So at the end of the day, it really mostly comes down to self-awareness, having the self-awareness of yourself. Um, I know that there are times when I can get lost in Jeff's world. Um, when I'm like that, I go to people closest to me and I say, hey, I'm here. You know, if, if I'm being rude or whatever, you have permission to come snap me out of it. Um, I like doing that because when I do do that and people know it gives them permission and we're not having a blow up um, later, um, it's more like I recognize I have the self-awareness that I might be oblivious. Uh, you can come let me know if that's happening and I recognize it as opposed to me just being oblivious, not telling anybody, create a problem. So and it really comes down to self-awareness. So forgive me, I do have to do a little bit of reading here because a lot of this isn't memorized. A dopamine is very, very, it's ADHD central. Think of it, I often tell people, think of ADHD as like a dopamine addiction. Dopamine is the reward neurotransmitter. So when you go out into the world, if you pay attention to it, you get dopamine. If you don't get dopamine, you kind of don't pay attention to it. And so what I do is I really try to help people manage, live ADHD by manage with it, not against it. So there's hormones like estrogen and testosterone and actually cortisol that actually affects the level of dopamine and can make ADHD either easier or actually exasperate it. Estrogen in particular for women is a big issue because it affects um, hormones, it affects dopamine, it actually affects emotional regulation as one would expect. Um, too much, too little can have an impact on more stress, less stress. Um, I, I honestly am not a female. Uh, the notion of having to live with a cycle and a period where your hormones uh, rise and fall and having the self-awareness to be able to manage, I think it's a bit of a challenge. Um, needless to say, is it, it just adds a more com another level of complexity to it. Testosterone, when it comes to men, also has an impact. Higher level of testosterone is increased risk-taking, increased impulse, imp of, of, of impulsive type behavior. Um, so if you have higher levels of testosterone, it can make some, some, some a little bit worse. Um, one that's near and dear to me is thyroid hormone. I had a medical condition that I got treated for many years ago, and my thyroid is out of whack. Um, I have to take thyroid medication really for the rest of my life. And after that challenge, 
there was definitely, I mean, I could see in my head, there was a difference in my cognitive abilities. And even now, if I miss my thyroid medication or it's late, it's a profound impact. Um, I think the thyroid is like one of those things that it's not, it wasn't totally understood many years ago, but it has a lot of impact. It was described to me, it's like a thermostat for a lot of other things related into your body. But I just tell you, when I haven't had my thyroid medication, I'm just sitting there like, okay, go do this, go do this. I'm like, I'm in my mind going, how come I can't get up and walk across the room and do this? Like I normally can do it, but I can't. It's a really big impact and it's kind of intense. Puberty, kind of alluded to that before. Um, typically when you're going through puberty, it's going to increase risk-taking behavior or impulsivity um, because as, as when puberty starts to take place, you're really transforming from a worm into a butterfly, if you will. You're going from a kid to an adult. Um, it's time to start uh, seeking mates or attracting mates. I mean, we can get into all kinds of stuff, but it's more the primitive size. And when those things are happening, if you've got ADHD, it can really exacerbate it. And then also with women later in life, when they go through menopause, uh, estrogen levels drop. Uh, we had talked about that earlier. Um, when estrogen levels drop, that has a negative impact on executive functions and dopamine. Um, Linda Rogley is a dear friend of mine. I've interviewed her a lot. Um, she's the AD diva. She specializes in that age, the 40th, the 40s, like when you have ADHD, AGE mean age, and then menopause, it's like a trifecta. Um, working memory is an executive, parts of executive function. It's impaired. When you start to hit your 40s, it starts to degrade. I can attest to that. And I'm 60, it's getting worse every day. Um, so that gets worse. But when you have ADHD, maybe you're a high functioning female, uh, working memory starts to um, struggle, which is already taxed, and then you lose estrogen, it's a real problem. I'm not here to say that you should go get hormones, but it's a conversation that most OBGYNs are not aware of. So it's there. So at the end of the day, this is really an impact. Um, you can do different things to manage your hormones with a doctor or physician, which you, can, which you can do. I think that there's different extremes for different people. So what you do really depends on yourself and your physician, but yeah, that does have an impact. I don't know for sure, but I've got to believe that just like anything else, certain things impact people differently. Like I know people who love to drink and hate to drink. I know people that love to smoke marijuana and other people, it creates a lot of anxiety. Substances have an impact um, individually on people. Um, I got to believe hormones are the same way. Some people have maybe bigger swings where other people are less, but from my perspective, it definitely does have an impact. It is something to learn about, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to self-awareness and being able to manage yourself. Um, and self-awareness is a bit of a challenge for people with ADHD, but that's, that's a show for another time. So for the individual who asked me to do this video, <clears throat> hope this was helpful. Um, if you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Also, um, I was an early adopter early on in ADHD by bringing content to, into videos and it served its purpose. But recently we've noticed a big move of information on the internet to be more entertaining, less quality content based. Um, so I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to educate you. So to help us out, if you could like us, put a quote, comment, anything to kind of keep our rankings up so we can get good information to people would certainly appreciate it. So with that, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Attention Talk video. Take care.